And we begin this hour with a live look out in Reading. Look how gray that is out there. This is through the Hasselbrood Law Sky Cam. We know it's been a wet morning after California was hit with more of that wet weather Sunday. But as those storms, snow and wind swept through the northern part of the state, this is video from my dash cam this morning on my way to work today. We'll hear about another series of inco incoming storms raising the potential for road flooding, rising rivers and mudslides on soils already saturated after days of rain. And welcome to the show. I'm Nazi Javi. Thank you for choosing Daybreak. We're, of course, going to go first to Chief Meteorologist Mike Kruger. Tracking a lot this Monday and maybe a break sometime? Soon. Yeah, we will see a break this afternoon and especially as we go later this week as well. And, you know, waking up early this morning to those gusty winds and even some downpours as well. And we're still seeing some of that out there right now. Now, notice the temperatures are fairly mild, even for the higher elevations, with the exception of Chester at about 32 degrees. We're, of course, seeing plenty of snow there as you go into the higher elevations. 42 in Hayfork, 44 Weaverville, obviously in the form of rain there. And notice the heaviest rainfall is east of the coast because we're on the back edge of where that rain is right now, but still seeing some pockets of at least some moderate rainfall for the valley, but even that is showing signs of beginning to taper off a bit. And we're going to just kind of watch this progression as we start to see it move eastward, meaning drier conditions moving from west to east throughout the morning and this afternoon. So again, you can kind of see as we stop the animation where everything is right now, drying out for the most part along the coast, but everywhere else seeing at least some form of rain and of course snow, mainly above 3,500, 4,000 feet before you start seeing those snowflakes accumulate. There you can still see some chain requirements on Highway 89 east of I-5, and there you can see Highway 36 west of I-5. So as usual, where we have the higher mountain passes, that's where we have most of the chain requirements right now. However, even at 4,300 feet, looks pretty good at Hatchet Mountain. This is on Highway 299 East. Uh, there you can see on Sh it's Shingletown, Highway 44, 3,500 feet. Looks pretty good there. They've done a pretty good job clearing off the roadway near Lassen Volcanic National Park. But Bogart Ranger Station near there, looking at plenty of snow on the highway. This is Highway 36 east of I-5. And there you can see southwest of Chester, east of Chester, snow covered. Even west of Susanville, snow covered as well. So just be prepared for that and aware of the fact that you'll most likely need those chains, if not good snow tires, before heading out to the mountains, especially east of I-5. Could see a break for many of us in the valley around noon, but then more showers, especially around Reading later this afternoon. But once it dries out for the coast today, this morning, I think it'll be dry through most of the day before the next storm system comes in for everyone by tomorrow. Good to know. Thanks, Mike. And the recent storms have killed five people throughout the state so far. And with more extreme weather on the way, Governor Gavin Newsom is requesting a presidential emergency declaration in hopes of getting federal support. Floods kill more individuals than any other natural disaster. We've already had more deaths in this flood storm since December 31st than we had in the last two fire seasons of the highest fire uh, acreage burned uh, in California. And to help communities deal with the potential of flooding in some areas this week, the state's Office of Emergency Services has deployed a number of resources to fire-scarred areas that are at risk of mudslides. Though the organization is sending emergency crews all over the state, they'll be sending one specialized set of resources to Butte County, including one water rescue team, two management teams, and one designated dispatcher. The concern in Butte County is flooding in areas previously impacted by wildfire. Locations that are downhill and downstream from burned areas are highly susceptible to flash flooding and debris flows, especially in and near steep terrain. And we're moving to the north coast now where stormy weather is also causing concerns. All schools in the northern Humboldt Union High School District may be impacted today due to the weather. Parents got this alert from the school Sunday afternoon. If the power goes out overnight and does not come back by 6.30 a.m., we'll likely not be in session. Whether we're in session or not, please take precautions driving to school and work tomorrow. Uh, there may be debris on the road and with the wind and rain, visibility is going to be an issue. Yeah, so again, if power is out, schools in the Northern Humboldt Union High School District will be closed, impacting Arcata, McKinleyville, Pacific Coast, Six Rivers Charter, and Mad River High Schools. And we're taking a broad look at outages in the North State now. Over 500 customers are without power in the Lassen National Forest in Butte County, and the outage started just after midnight with no restoration time estimated. 
And in Chico, a huge one. Over 2,500 have been without power since 2 a.m. all around Highway 32 and West Sacramento Avenue. No restoration time has been announced. There are still some outages along the northern coastline, though. Each yellow area you see there means between 50 and 500 customers are without power. With some of those outages, the restoration time for many is lengthy, too, causing serious concern for customers. In Barry Glen and Oric, 314 customers have been without power since Wednesday. And according to PG&E's outage map, won't have their power restored until January 20th. That's in another 11 days. The areas around Big Lagoon, including the county park, will tentatively have power restored by January 18th. That's still over a week from now. And near the Big Lagoon County Park area, 150 are impacted. Power has been out since January 4th and isn't expected to be back until the 18th. And an outage near Patrick's Point, the entire state park without power, 131 impacted. They should get power back by this Friday, January 13th, according to PG&E. The fact that, you know, they can't deal with this within 14 days is, it's kind of third world, honestly. As PG&E crews race to restore power throughout Humboldt County, one northern Humboldt community has resorted to other means of survival after getting notice that their power will not be restored for two weeks. County officials and organizations like Pay It Forward Humboldt and Food for People have come together to help the community impacted in Trinidad. They are providing resources in and around the area that will remain in the dark and cold until PG&E can make it to their area. Sophie Lincoln reports on the dire situation. It kind of feels like uh, a lot of the more rural places are getting neglected right now. Much of Northern California has been without power at some point during this past week's storm. But some communities north of Trinidad must remain in the dark for an estimated two weeks, according to PG&E. The time of restoration for it is January 18th. That's because the place that we need to make the repairs in a more re remote location where we've had trouble having getting having trouble getting access. In the meantime, people living in those areas must figure out how they will survive without access to basic resources. Without power, most of us are on wells and pumps, so that also means we don't have water or flushing toilets or anything like that. With PG&E unable to restore power in the area sooner, city officials and organizations have taken it upon themselves to use the small portion of the area that does have power for the rest of the area in the dark. At this point, it's batten down the hatches and help each other and check on your neighbors. So our biggest concerns right now are elderly, disabled, people on CPAP machines, oxygen, things like that. Since power has been restored in Trinidad proper, the town hall is being used as a charging station, warming station, and resource distribution center with help from various local organizations. We're providing our coffee and snacks and charging stations. And this afternoon we'll be joined by Food for People, and we'll also be joined by Pay It Forward Humboldt, and we'll be providing uh, MREs and snacks and um, hopefully some non-perishable food as well. Yeah, and Jason Self says they have reached out to Congressman Jared Huffman's office for help with no response yet. Many of the people impacted can't even see this newscast, but you can reach out on their behalf to Huffman's Eureka office.